Creating your own personalized swatch book is one of the quickest and easiest ways to showcase your favorite photos. And the finished product is inexpensive to print and so convenient to carry with you and share. There are two sizes, one that measures 5 and 3 quarters inches by 3 and 1 half inches, and one that measures 5 and 3 quarters inches square. Each has 10 double-sided pages of durable UV-coated stock. The pages have rounded corners, clear protective sheets on the front and back, and are bound with a plastic brad. You can design your own swatch book or choose from pre-formatted templates in the template gallery. Think of the possibilities. A vacation swatch book, a brag book showing your kids or grandkids, educational flashcards, Mother's Day or Father's Day gifts, the list goes on and on. So let's get started. First, we'll work on a swatch book using a template from the gallery. For those not familiar with the Heritage Makers template gallery, this is where you can choose from an extensive collection of pre-designed projects. These layouts come from professional designers and everyday heritage makers who have created some great projects and are willing to share. So log into your account and go to the template gallery. In the show drop down menu, we'll select swatch book. Look through the designs to find just the right template. You can press the preview button to take a closer look. When you find a design you like, click on the details button and choose get this template. Now you will be on the my templates page in your account and you can see the template you just selected. Click on start my own and you'll be transferred to the my projects in progress section. Select edit and the template will load into the studio program so you can start working on it. Now let's just take a minute and describe the studio interface. Right now in the main section of the screen, we see the layout for page one, which actually will serve as the cover for the swatch book. Over on the right, we see thumbnails of the other 19 pages, including page C, which will be the back cover, or page 20. You can navigate to any one of the pages by clicking on the thumbnails. Please note the pink shaded square on all pages, on the right hand side of all even pages, and the left of the odd pages. This area is reserved for the brad that holds the swatch book together. You can place a photo or embellishment in that area. Just be aware that this area will be slightly obscured by the swatch book binding. So obviously you would not want to place text or an important part of a photo near that spot. On the last page, the lower section is also shaded pink, indicating that it will be covered by the Heritage Makers logo, project ID number, and other information. Up here on top you'll find save buttons, a publish button for when you're done with the project, a magnifying tool to help you work with the template, some buttons for cut, copy, and paste, and a trash can. On the left side are tools for manipulating and adjusting the components of your layout. It looks a little complicated, but it's really pretty simple, and we'll go over the basics later on. The next step is to upload the photos you want to use in this project to your Heritage Makers account. Along the bottom of the screen, you can see a series of tabs. All these are part of the Content Explorer and give you access to photos, artwork, quotes, and components of past projects. But right now we're interested in the tab labeled My Photos. Click on it to raise the window. This left side will show your uploaded files organized into folders that contain individual albums. So let's load some photos that we have on the computer that will be useful for our swatch book. We'll choose the New Folder button and give it the name Favorite People. When we have the name typed in, we'll click on Create Folder. Then, to keep these images even more organized, we'll create a special album for each child. Now we are ready to start uploading photos. Make sure you have the correct folder or album selected, then click Add More Photos. In the pop-up window that appears, find the photos on your computer you want to upload. You can upload one photo at a time, but most people like to do several at a time. You can do this by holding down the Control key while you select each one you want. If you want a whole series of images, just hold down the Shift key and click on the first and last photo of the series. By the way, we are doing this tutorial on a Mac. The keystrokes are a little different. If you are using a Mac, when you hear the term Control button, just think the Mac equivalent, which is the Command or Apple button. When you are ready to upload, choose Open or Select and the process will begin. This status window will show the progress of the upload. 
Depending on the number and size of the photos and your internet connection speed, the upload may take several minutes. When you want to add more photos, just create a new album or folder or use an existing one and follow the same process. Once uploaded to your studio account, you can rest assured that your valuable images are protected from fire, flood, or computer failure. You can upload any digital image. That includes files directly downloaded from your digital camera or the files resulting from scans of photo prints. All photos should be in the JPEG format, which is the standard file type used by all popular digital cameras and scanners. Let's go ahead now and replace one of the photos in the template with our own photo. Studio makes it so easy with the drag and drop feature. Click anywhere inside of the photo you want to replace to make it active. You'll know it's active because a thick pink border will show up around the photo and a small red box with the words drop photo here to swap will also appear. If the photo has a green border when you click on it, this means it is in the unlocked position. When a photo is unlocked, it can be moved around by clicking and dragging. Most templates come with photos in the locked position, so they don't accidentally get moved out of position as you work with them. Here is the padlock icon that lets you know the lock, unlock status of the photo. It's a toggle switch. It's either locked or unlocked. So again, make sure the photo you want to change has the pink border around it. Now put your cursor on the handle of the Content Explorer and click on it to access your photos. Click on the folder and the album you want and find the photo you want to use on the page. Click on the photo and drag it so that your arrow cursor is inside the smaller red box that says, Drop Photo Here to Swap. The new photo magically pops into the placeholder. A common mistake is to let go of the mouse button with the cursor positioned outside of the red box but still within the borders of the photo placeholder. If you do this, the image will simply end up as a new image on the page and will not be placed into the placeholder as you had intended. If the photo doesn't seem to swap in, try holding the control key. Besides adding new photos, we need to change the text. Each block of text is its own element. When you click on a section of type, it will become active and will either have a pink or a green border around it. Pink means it's locked and can't be altered. Green means it's unlocked and you can change the text. Let's toggle the padlock icon to the unlocked state. Now, double click on the words and a cursor will appear. Click and drag the cursor over any word or words you want to replace and type in the new text. If you need to make formatting changes to the copy, you can use these tools over here on the left side of the screen. They are pretty self-explanatory. You can change the typeface, the type size, the alignment, the type style, the line spacing, the letter spacing, and so on. But remember, you have to have the text box highlighted to make the change. Just as an example, let's say we wanted to replace this text in the template with our own wording we highlight the text we want to change. Type in the new text, and it looks like we have a problem because there's not enough room for the new text. We can simply highlight the text box and drop the size down a bit to accommodate the change. One word of caution here. Swatch books are convenient to carry around because they are so small. That five and three quarters by three and one half template may look large on your computer screen, but what you are looking at is probably not the actual size. As a double check, go up to the View menu and zoom to 100%. This way you'll get an idea of exactly how it will look when printed. This concludes part one of the tutorial. Please watch part two to learn more about making your swatch book.